Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to bring things down to earth again and to discover a bit the world of digitalization of agriculture and to think about what's on your plates this evening, what do you eat and what's behind this food we produce or you are eating. And you see, it's not just idyllic, it's just not nature and flowers and so. There's a lot of technology inside all that, you know. And you see, the question is, how, where are we today and where will we be tomorrow? You see, a simple wheat field is quite a complex system. We have the plants with their characters, as we all have our characters. Then you have the soil giving the food and the water to the plant. Then you have all the weather conditions. Then you have pests coming inside. The plants get fever, they get a flu, or we have insects eating the plants. You see, it's a very, very dynamic system. And perhaps this is the reason why, till now, agriculture is still an analog business and not very digitized uh, for the moment. But the potential is huge, and I think linking all these different parameters together, using cloud computing, with models, machine learning, our technologies of the future, which will help us to manage this better, to foresee a drought, or to see when we have soil compaction and to give the right amount of fertilizers. I think these are all topics to well and better handle these uh, agronomic systems. So I would like to give you some examples to be a bit more hands-on, what's going on, where the problems are, how can you better manage our plants and our animals. This is a simple example. You see, we have to feed the plant as you are feeding each day. If you feed too much, then yeah, our belly is getting a bit bigger, but uh, in the plants it's a bit different. If we put too much nitrogen on the plant, on the soil, then we have nitrate leaching, uh, what you don't like having nitrate in the water you're drinking, it's not the best thing. Or we have nitrous oxide then in the atmosphere, which is a greenhouse gas, what you don't want. So the goal is that we, each kilogram of fertilizer we give to the plant is absorbed by the plant and is transformed to proteins, which we can eat then in form of bread or whatever it is. So here is a simple regulation cycle. We have a, a sensor on the tractor roof, a computation unit, and it only makes the distinction between dark green and light green plants. This is quite a good parameter to know uh, how well the plant is feeded, and then we give more or less fertilizer to a plant. We can do the same with drones. A picture from a drone in this side, you see, Different colored areas means different nutrition status of the plants. And that's what I liked very much in Johannes' game, that the, the gamers and the farmers, they, rake, they like the play button. You see, I had farmers to me, we, we tried nice programs on PCs and personal computers. Farmers hate personal computers and they love the smartphone. Because they love to be on the field, they see, oh, I have a problem, and then taking the smartphone, oh, what are the weather data, which plant protection has been, which problem do I have with uh, my uh, fertilization status. I think this is the way they like to do, and the farmers always told me, I'm not an electronician, I'm not a data scientist, I'm a farmer, and the tools which have to help me must be simple. And I think the typical example here is, that a drone in the future, making flying a drone push the button is not so complicated. Then the pictures directly go to the uh, cloud, are computed there, and the farmer gets the response in form of a fertilization maps, which he can directly uh, use in his tractor. I think this new, easy way of doing things, uh, that's what we can learn from the gaming industry, and that's the way of thinking. We still have to learn a lot. What can we do, and how do we understand these things? So then, another issue is, another example is, you can use satellite imageries. It's a service already uh, used in France. It's also for the fertilization of plants. Uh, you see the same colored. It's much coarser. It's not as fine as drone images are. 
And here in Switzerland, you have so many clouds all days. You will see it this evening or tomorrow. And when there are clouds, there are no satellite images. So it's, it's quite a, a bit of competition between these technologies, but also these pictures could be treated automatically and then transferred to the tractors to apply the right amount of fertilization. And then, a very different other topic, you all know that you have a very huge tractor. Here is a, an example of a slurry tanker. When it's full, it's over 20 tons. The sugar beet harvest, it can weigh up to 60 tons. And we are compacting the soil, everything is pressed together. And the consequences are soil erosion or uh, ponding water, but it's not really good for the plant health. So what we could do is, just let's drive the tractors as railways are. With the RTK GPS, we are able to drive the tractors with an accuracy of 2.5 centimeters on each year. So let's put railway lines in our fields that we always are wheeling the same areas. And in Australia, they are number one. They only have 10% of tracked areas and 9% without any compaction of the soil, so very good condition for plant growth. So this auto-steering uh, system is very promising. It's not so easy to realize it, especially on the small Swiss field. And it's not only the material change, it's also the change of the mind. People have to believe, OK, let's use these new technologies. Let's combine together. And they all know tomorrow not only autonomous car will come, but also autonomous tractors will come and they will drive with a very, very high accuracy. And the result of that, you see here on the left side, an uh, untrafficked area, no track, and on the right-hand side, a tracked area. You see on the left, you have a fine crumbly soil, a lot of uh, fine roots, so the plant can extract all the water and all the nutrients in the soil. And on the right-hand side, it's more rocky, you have blocks, you have uh, less uh, roots. So that's very harsh conditions for plants. And we were able to show that you can easily gain about uh, 10 to 15% of yield when you don't compact your soil. And this is, in the same time, a good protection against climate change because on the, for you on the left-hand side, where the soil is crumbly, there the water can infiltrate. The water storage of the soil is much better if you have storms or if you have droughts, the absorption is better and also the water retention is better. So we also can uh, deal with the issue of climate change to have a better and water storage and less soil erosion then. Here you see on the right hand side a uh, hoe working. You see a very intelligent one. Oh, it goes around the plant. So a camera is recognizing the plant, you see it again, oh, yes, oh no, all the salads are still there, you see, it's a bit frightening, is it working, the technology or not? So this is the real, the very first beginning of hoeing. You see, in times we had the driver, we needed two persons to drive a hoe, or it was handwork, you see, with the hoe you had to... Uh, go at each plant to clear it up, so it's a hell of a lot of work, and you see all these issues, how can you replace pesticide, reduce the amount of pesticide? We will not be able to replace all pesticide by mechanics, but we will be able in the future to replace a lot of pesticide by intelligent systems. You see uh, different areas. So at the bottom left, you see an example where we can uh, hoe between the rows or then the last evolution that you also can weed uh, within the line. The next spot is that you say, OK, we still use pesticides, but we use them more intelligently. Here is the application on salad of fungicides and insecticides. If the salads are small, if you have to protect them, they only cover about 10% of the soil. So it doesn't make sense to spray the whole soil. It's just sufficient just to spray the salads. Very simple, that's it. But it needs quite a lot of development. But now it's, it's coming, that here a common project. So these are all issues how we are able to reuse quite a nice amount of herbicide. Vision, another example of vision. If a meadow has hole, 
or this is also in a football stadium, if you have uh, not the right uh, weeds there or the right grass, you can treat the areas where it's not, uh, uh, whether it's not the plant there you like to. So here an example that you can overseed holes in a meadow where it's just uh, earth and soil and no grass. You just by camera can detect the holes and you have a seed beside who is applying the seed at the right place and this makes that you can uh, economize about 40 to 50 percent of the seeds and grass seeds are quite expensive so this for the farm is profitable. And now here you see one of the first autonomous vehicles for weeding. This machine is still applying uh, herbicides. We are working on it to transform it to organic, to apply hot water or with a flame that we can use this machine without any herbicides. And you see what we are struggling here in Switzerland that this farm industry is still very analog. And you see they are dealing with how to step into this uh, digital um, area. And I think this is also a potential of 5G that you can say we don't need the intelligence on the machine, we have all the intelligence in the cloud. And then the service and maintenance of the machines is much easier. If you have new software releases, you don't need to update the machines, you update everything in the cloud. And here for weed detection, machine learning is very important. So it will be much easier to collect all this data and improve the systems. So I think this is uh, quite a bright future for these machines to connect them, to collect the data and to learn out of data. And the new tools with this uh, machine learning are certainly quite important step towards this direction. Drones are also coming. Switzerland is the first country which knows now in Europe uh, homologation of these drones. So they are very interesting in steep vineyards. Here we see a small uh, episode of a sprayer test. So a drone now for us is like a normal sprayer. And in vineyards it's very interesting to use them because if you have to go and make the application by hand, there's a hell of a lot of work. On the right hand side you see a helicopter for the distribution of uh, small balls and within these balls are wasps which are used against the pest in corn. So drones already know quite a, uh, have a nice present uh, application in the Swiss agriculture. For the moment they are only spraying but they could also carry a camera and collect data, so increasement of, of the services, application maps and whatever. So using these drones for future applications certainly would be very interesting too. And then another example is the connected tree. If we know the, way to, the water status in the soil, we know the weather conditions, the weather core forecast, and the forecasts are getting better and better. When I was a young boy, we were happy to get a good forecast for the next day. Now we have forecasts uh, for three to five days, which are already quite good. And I think we will have in five or ten years' time forecasts for two or three weeks. Then you are much better able to program and to planify what is your ne needed for your plants. And then you can combine different sensing units plant sensors like the dendrometers, which is measuring uh, the diameter of the plants. It's a very simple measure, but the, the plant is uh, transpirating during the day, so the diameter decreases, and during night, when she gets the water again, the diameter increases. So a very simple measure in an IoT network, you can use these measures and you know exactly how stressed the plant it is. And then you can, can combine it in a sensor network and to planify your irrigation much better. We have several orchards running in Switzerland. We also have an experiment with cocoa in Brazil. And there we were able to show that it's easily uh, possible to save about 30% of water. In some cases, we were able to, uh, to, 
to economize about uh, 100%. It's the same you at home. If, if you think the plant, ah, this plant needs a bit more, I want the best for my plant, so I put more and more, and it has to be sure that it is. And the farmers are thinking a bit the same. And if you are controlling the system accurately, so you gain quite a lot of accuracy, and then you really can save water. So let's switch to the milk production. It's about 25 years since the first milking robot came in. And then we thought, oh, milking robot, it's never a story for Switzerland. It's too expensive and it's too complicated. And today we have over 800 milking robots in small Switzerland. This is really amazing because milking robot is uh, easy, easing the life so much. So on Sunday morning you can sleep in, the robot is milking for you, then you make a check after breakfast, whatever. It gives you family life back again, which you hadn't before. And the prices are so under pressure that the farmers really have to uh, economize the labor. And so these technologies uh, know quite a nice success. So for me, a very nice example. If te technology really helps, then it sees a success. We also have quite a high degree of automation. So feeding uh, units, which work completely automated, are still uh, state of the art. But we still have islands, though they, these different islands can't communicate together, so there are a lot of issues to be solved still. But uh, it's amazing how well it already works. And here, on the left-hand side, we see the first 5G sensor from the company Autoso from China, a real 5G, and this narrowband IoT uh, sensors, they certainly have a quite high interest of farming. This um, sensor is measuring the acceleration at the neck of the cow and the rhythm for, of rumination when, is, when the cow is chewing, this gives you an indication how well this cow is feeding and shows you uh, the, the health status. On the right hand side you see another sensor, it's a, a holster with a sensor around the nose which is only a pressure sensor, so a very simple tool too. But then each time that the cow is chewing, you get a, a signal on the pressure sensor, then you can describe how well this cow is feeding. And you see, the more milk the cow has to give, the more the cow has to feed, the, the healthier it is. It's, I always compare it a bit like uh, our Roger Federer. He is a very good sportsman and he had a good training and he's becoming elderly and elderly. So the health status and the fitness status of the animal is very important. And we don't want to keep the animals only for two or three years. We would like to have a cow for five, ten or even more years. So now we have a competition between our farmers, uh, which cow gives most milk. And now we had records, it's over 210,000 of liters of milk of one cow during their lifetime. So this is also saving costs that you don't need to change your herd uh, frequently, but that you can work with the same animals for more time. Okay, these are so, some examples. Uh, you see behind this bright green nature is already a lot of technology, and I think to bring these two worlds together, on one side, you have the nature, and on the other hand side, you have to manage it accordingly. I think this is our big challenge. Thank you very much.